you. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. Sure. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Byron. Uh, I've been introduced. Nice to see you. Thanks for, uh, for uh, joining us here in New Orleans and taking some interest in, in what we're trying to do here at the School of Architecture. Uh, I'm going to speak, uh, I'm going to give you a general overview of how our urban build program works. Uh, so I'm going to go through this quickly. Uh, and I ask that if you have any uh, additional interest in what we're doing here, please visit our, our website, urbanbuild.tulane.edu, to find out a little bit more about what we do. Um, hmm? Sure. Is that, is that better? Okay. Um, our urban build program is one of our school's many design build programs now. It was actually initiated prior to Hurricane Katrina by a group of us here uh, who wanted to offer architecture students the opportunity to learn a little bit more about our discipline through engagement with, with materials, through engagement with a team. Uh, but following Hurricane Katrina, the, the mission was um, re-evaluated. And so the way the program works, in a nutshell, is we work with a group of 12 students in the uh, first half, during the first half of the year, uh, on developing schemes for housing infill strategies, prototypes. Uh, that group of 12, they each develop a strategy, then we pair them. They work on shared strategies, then they vote. They choose one to fabricate. One half of the group produces a full set of construction documents that we run through the city. Uh, we get the project permitted by the end of December. We break ground mid-January and we finish building the house by May. So we, we frankly, we, get, we build the house within a 12 to 14 week period. And so that's in a nutshell how the, how the project works. And, and, and I wanted to speak a little bit about how we start. We always start by letting the students know that we're hoping to provide to the city some progressive examples of, of what housing might be. But we always insist that they first look at what works with the housing stock that we have, have here already. Uh, I think we all know this, this is a rich city with, with incredible examples of, of domestic uh, product, home types. Uh, and the students always begin by analyzing what parts, what pieces of the common, ho common, ho common homes work. And then they begin to reevaluate how those pieces might be reassembled, and they develop strategies for a proposition for proposal. They choose one of these strategies for construction, and, the, and I'll speak about that in a moment, about the first house we built and what we dealt with. But we always ask them that while they're thinking about the development of a home, they never forget that the intention is to use these homes to help us to revitalize neighborhoods. So we're not building projects that are standalone. We actually attempt to build projects that fit within the context of the city. And we're working in neighborhoods, with the exception of one project, we've been working in, in dense neighborhoods that have been uh, neglected or overlooked for the, for the last 20 years. We've worked in the, in the Seventh Ward. We've concentrated in Central City. We have a project in the works in, in, in Mid-City, and we've also got uh, one project that we built with uh, the Make It Right Foundation in the Ninth Ward. So uh, we're scattered about a bit, but we, we tend to prefer working in, in the neighborhoods. So the first time that I was asked to work on this with a group of other faculty here, I was uh, provided the mission to build a house with 12 students who'd never built a house before in 12 weeks. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, what have we gotten ourselves into? But we did it. And the first house we did right after Hurricane Katrina helped us to deal with this issue of, of vertical growth. We're building in neighborhoods that are below sea level. While we now have to build the homes higher, uh, we, we still want to maintain some connection to the scale of the neighborhood. And so this first project, I think the cross section exemplifies this simple desire that there's always a portion of the home that's about the street. And there's another portion of the home which is, which is about security and safety. And we, we got through this project during that first summer following Hurricane Katrina. And we're in this neighborhood building a house while many other homes are being revitalized. We see this project as a part of the urban fabric, but not a replication of other components of the urban fabric. And we, we finished it on time. And we found an owner. We, we're, we do this in partnership with a local nonprofit, Neighborhood Housing Services of New Orleans. And we put a young man into the home who was a, who was a, he, he's, he was from that neighborhood to begin with. He's a New Orleans police officer. And we felt like, okay, we've proven this. So after the first house, 
we're standing pr proud. We're like, okay, we can do this. And we built the first house as a stick framed system because we knew we could. I, I have a background in, in fabrication and carpentry. Um, I left town for, I'm from here, I love this place. I left town for a little while, came back and decided maybe it was a good place to stay. And uh, that was in 1998. I've been here a long time now. After finishing the first house with reliance upon skills that I was comfortable with, we started to look at the use of other systems. We, we had one built, uh, we built one home using prefabricated metal panels, one home built using uh, prefabricated SIPs, uh, and, and we, we were always challenged by our students to think about other options. And that's what's been a, a, the largest lesson for me. When we first started the program, I'm like, fantastic. We'll get to design some projects with our students and we'll be able to realize them. And frankly, I thought that was pretty good. But now, having been into this for six or seven years, I'm realizing that's not the priority. The, prior, the priority is not to build cool projects. The priority is to give a group of students the opportunity to work together on the realization of a project. And, and we have the examples, each, each house serves as an example to the following group of what students, what their colleagues can accomplish. And it's really funny, each year the projects become a little, little stronger. Uh, they're finished with a little more care because each group of students walks into the previous year's project, they look around and they leave that site visit with this attitude of, oh, we can do this. And so they, they really challenge themselves to not only do what their predecessors did, but to do it a little bit better the next time. And so we ran through these first four houses in the first four years of the program. We're now working on number seven. But at the end of this, this, this four year sequence, we had to really sit back and figure out what we were doing and, and how we can make the program stronger. And if this meeting today is about, uh, is, is about how we design a curriculum, uh, this is how we run the Urban Build program. The first half of the year, the students take our design studio while they're taking other classes. But when we break ground in January, they only work with Urban Build. We, we've developed a, a core sequence of classes which consist of one um, professional concerns class where we, we talk about how we negotiate with our subcontractors, how members of the team negotiate with each other, how we negotiate with the building inspectors and so forth. They take an advanced technology class. That's when we're dealing with materials and methods. And then of course we continue to develop the designs of, of the project. And so all wrapped up, all wrapped up into that spring semester coursework are these various classes through the realization of one project. And, and, and the structure of the program has allowed us to increase the scale of our work. So we did one project in affiliation with the Make, Make It Right organization, in affiliation with a local contractor of record, TKO Construction. We were able to gain access to other systems, solar panel systems, cooling systems, heating systems that re we could not regularly afford access to. Uh, the, we, we returned recently to the local neighborhood of Central City uh, and our, the scope of our work is becoming a little greater uh, in scale. Uh, the interior qualities of finish, I think, are, are improving. And I think it's, 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 it's giving us the opportunity to offer to students opportunities to realize that they have many skills uh, to, to develop, really. And I'll end by telling this story. Um, another alumnus of this program, Dan McGinn, an old classmate of mine, from this building. And now he's a principal with El Dorado Architects uh, in Kansas City. He calls uh, Dean Schwartz and I uh, a year and a half ago and says, hey, we've just been awarded uh, the contract to build the display booths for the National AIA Convention to be held in New Orleans. Can you guys send us your standard urban build cut list? Uh, what materials do you use to make a standard home? And we did that. And they used those parts and pieces to begin the design of the signage and avenues and display rooms of, that, of the convention. The students and, and, and I and Sam Richards went down there at the end of the convention, dismantled all those parts and pieces, and right now those pieces are being used to build the house uh, that we're making now. And while that's a great story, it's, it's, I think it's, it, you know, we, can, we, can, we can load that story up. We can talk about salvaged goods and sustainable issues. And, and, and what's really important, I think, 
is that we're gaining some recognition at the national level for what's happening in this small town. And you know, you look at the photo here, and, and, and the groups of students annually are growing. And if there's one thing I have to say which I appreciate most about the way our program has developed is that in this group, we may start with a, a group of students where there, there are one or two students who are shining stars. Um, but we end with a group of students where they're all shining stars. They all figure out what they're good at. Some are better at management, some are better at budget, and so forth. So that's, that's a quick intro to what we do. Okay, thank you.